Redemption Way. The Lord is going to surprise someone here tonight. Join Pastor E.A. Adeboye and other men of God every first Friday of the month as they lead multitudes of worshippers to the presence of God in the monthly Holy Ghost service at the Redemption Camp, Kilometer 46, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, from 6:30 p.m. to dawn. There is a redeemed Christian Church of God very close to you. Join them for a life-changing experience in worship. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Welcome you specially to the Open Heavens International Center. I tell you that I had several encounters with God in that house. Let somebody shout the anointing in that house is uh, awesome.
You're watching Redemption Way. The God of Jacob, Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, Israel, the Rock of Ages, the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, Judah, we worship you. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. The Alpha and the Omega, the the Unchangeable Changer. The one who can deliver. The one who can heal. The one who can save. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you did on Monday. Thank you for what you did on Tuesday. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for what you've done since this morning. Thank you in advance for tomorrow. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, like never before, help us in Jesus' name. In all areas of our lives, show yourself mighty. Solve all our problems and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Where is Isaiah? Ori Ogoji, Esseko Kondilabon. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Where will you Isaiah? Ori Ogoji, Esseko Kondilabon. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Tonight we want to talk about Overcoming mountains. 
la le ya be so nipa bi bori awon oke what is a mountain kini oke a mountain is usually regarded as the hindrance to your progress a ma fi gba gbogbo wo oke gege bi o win ti wo si itesi waju re an obstacle that is preventing you from reaching your goal an obstruction that is preventing you from possessing your possession anything that is standing between you and actualizing your destiny when we talk about mountain, the first thing we think about is a big problem. The mountains can be useful. Mountain can be God's own way of advertising you. Israel didn't know David until Goliath came on the scene. Israel David Titi Goliath you are or no? It is the coming of Goliath into the land of Israel that suddenly propelled David to the limelight. We were going to see Israel. Oh, no, we David the logic. God damn it. Okay, keep it off. I go. The mountain, a problem, big problem. Okay, come. It's your own. That is your own. Could be God's own way of waking you up. And to ask you to come closer to him. In Acts chapter 12, when you read it from verse 1, when Herod killed James, the, the church didn't do anything about it. But when he grabbed, grabbed Peter, the church suddenly realized if we don't do something, this man will kill us all. The Bible said the church then began to pray. A problem, a big problem can be something that God is using to say, hey, I am here, come and talk to me. And mountain, a big problem. Okay, be could be something God could use to develop your spiritual muscles. It was in prison that what? Joseph became an interpreter of dreams. He was a mere dreamer before. But when he got to prison, he moved on from a dreamer to an interpreter of dreams. Imagine, okay, who help you to discover your potential. Your 
You may never discover what is inside of you until you are faced with a big problem. Philip didn't know that he was to be an evangelist. Philip, he thought he was only good as a deacon. But when Paul began to throw every Christian into prison, Paul, 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 and he killed his friend, Stephen, Stephen. he ran. And in running, he got to Samaria. And he brought joy to a whole city. You may never know what is in you until you come face to face with a big problem. Some of you know this testimony. Whenever the convention is near, our churches send in volunteers to clean up the camp. And one day, I was going around inspecting the camp. From morning to evening. By evening, I was very tired. I just told my family, come, let's pray, I want to sleep. And I prayed a very short prayer. Because I was tired. And I went to bed. And I fell asleep immediately. As soon my wife came and woke me up. Like Penny, Mama Waji Baba. Oh, woman, leave me alone. I'm tired. Oh, uh, she said one of the volunteers is dead. And is the one that came from your village. <laughs> I woke up in a hurry. Tiredness disappeared. I quickly gathered the prayer warriors. And we went and began to pray. In that kind of situation, you pray all manners of prayers. After about one hour, God spoke. And said, son, I thought you said you were tired. I said, <laughs> that was then. He said, tell the prayer warriors to go. It's you I want to talk to. So I dismissed the prayer warriors. And then I continued with prayer. And while I was praying, the one who was dead became the one who is sleeping. And before you need, she was fully back. You never know what is inside of you until a problem comes. And every treasure that God has hidden in you before the end of this convention, they will begin to manifest. A mountain okay. could be a divine setup for testimonies. God wants to give you a testimony. And he starts with a mountain. When God wants to do the miraculous, he starts with an impossibility. When he wants to give you a big testimony, 
he starts with a big problem. Those of you who are here, you know very well. If we say it is testimony time, and somebody gets up, I said, praise the Lord with me. Last week I had malaria fever. And now I'm well. I know what you will say. Oh, sit down. Let's hear him. But if somebody gets up, like the man who, who testified earlier, and said, My wife had been barren for 20 years, and the first baby is a set of triplets. Ah, then you all get up and you clap. So those of you who are facing big mountains now, in the mighty name of Jesus, before the convention is over, we will hear your big testimony. But then there's something else about a mountain. It is that it gives you an assurance that there is something great on the other side. Oh, the logic of one will Oh, one lack of bear than you okay. A mountain gives you an assurance of a greater tomorrow. Okay, for me, Danny Lodge, or John Lato Toby Jojo. That if only I can get to the other side of this mountain, there's something precious. Waiting there. I've told you before. In a house where a man has only one shirt and one trouser, and an old bicycle. There's no need for a wall. No thief is coming. No thief. They, don't want, they don't want to steal an old bicycle. That's why if you go to a certain part of Lagos, you don't see walls surrounding houses. But if you go to another section of Lagos, you see high walls. You see barbed wire on top. Because inside that wall, there are treasures. Behind the mountain you are facing now, there's a glorious tomorrow. I am already rejoicing with you. Because very soon, you will come and testify. Amen. But probably the most important thing about mountain is that the size of your mountain is proportional to the size of your destiny. The bigger the mountain, the bigger your destiny. In Numbers chapter 13, verse 26, to 33. Numbers 13. Verse 26 to 33. The spies that Moses sent to spy the land came back and said, Oh, the land is flowing with milk and honey. Ah, ile na nsha fu ara ti fo yin. Be di ara giants. Ipo awon omiran be ni be. Giant problems. In shoro ti se omiran must always occupy 
the land flowing with milk and honey. It is interesting that they said something funny. They said the land eats up the inhabitants thereof. If the land eats up the inhabitants, then where come the giants? When your destiny is big, your mountain will be big. The devil knew that David was going to be the king of Israel. And so he brought a giant. And listen to what Goliath said. Send me a man. If he defeats me, the Philistines will serve Israel. If I defeat him, Israel will become our slave. The devil wanted to take the destiny of David away from him. And he presented the mountain in the form of Goliath. But the God that gave David victory is here tonight and is going to give victory to somebody here. If you are the one, let me hear your email. Oh, but you're not, then go on, me, da, 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 da. When you are about to fight, the first thing they do is they weigh you. They weigh you. They weigh you and weigh your opponent. If you are very light, they will only give you another light opponent. If you are heavy, then they give you a heavy opponent. When your mountain is big, it is likely that you are a heavyweight champion for God. How many heavyweight champions of God are here tonight? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. So now, how do we deal with mountains? There are several ways. I'm going to talk about seven major ones. And I'm talking about, I'm talking to those who are intelligent, who will not ignore the mountain. Amen, because there are some people who will ignore the mountain. They, they will say there is no mountain. They just pretend as if it's not there. The mountain won't disappear because we ignore it. Seven ways that you can deal with the mountain. Number one is to turn back. 
I said, well, the mountain is blocking my way. Ah, okay. So I'm not going forward anymore. Going. In Numbers 14, you know, no, 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 no. verse 1 to 4. Yes, can you see, can we? Numbers 14, verse 1 to no, 4. No, 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 no. Yes, can you see, can we? The children of Israel said, no, I want to rally. We Let's go back to Egypt. There's a mountain blocking our way to the promised okay. land. But the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, God says if any tongue back is heart will have no pleasure in such a fellow. My prayer for you, is that you will never turn back in Jesus' name. And in any case, there are some of us. We have tried everything else before we came to Jesus Christ. So there's no way we can go again. This is our last bus stop. And you will never go back in Jesus' name. Number two, one could decide to walk around the mountain. But walking around the mountain is wasted effort. Because the mountains by nature they may be small at the top, but they are very wide at the bottom. And in any case, what God said in Exodus 14, verse 15, Exodus 14, verse 15, when the children of Israel came to the Red Sea, what God said is, tell the children of Israel to move forward. Not go round in circles. Forward. And now I'm saying to all of you who are here tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, move forward. The third thing, the third way you can deal with a mountain is to climb it. Now, climbing a mountain may require effort. That is far, far better than going around in circles. And it's far, far better than going back. In Numbers chapter 13, verse 13, Numbers 13, verse 13, Numbers 13, verse 13, let us go up at once. Let's climb this mountain. And there is this special joy that you have when you get to the top of the mountain. You can imagine the joy of David. In 1 Samuel 17, verse 51. 1 Samuel 17, verse 51. When he stood on top of Goliath, you can imagine the joy in him. And the joy of reaching the top of your mountain. Reaching the top of the mountain before you. The Almighty God will give it to you tonight. Number four way of dealing with a mountain is to bore a hole through the okay, to dig a tunnel through the mountain. 
Aluja, see all the keji. Lati abe okeyi. So you go from where you are to the other side of the mountain. Tori na wa lo lati bi to wa lo see all the keji okeyi. Even though the mountain is still there, but you are on the other side. But it just, but it just be okay. She in Benin be. What is record just see all the keji. In Exodus chapter fourteen. Inu Exodus ori keni la. Verse twenty one to twenty eight. Ese koko li logo si keji dini agba. Exodus 14, 21 to 28. When Moses lifted up his hand, God caused the east wind to blow all night and created a way in the Red Sea. The children of Israel passed through on dry land. And the sea came back together again. You bore a hole through the mountain. And then you go through. Now boy a hole through the mountain. We why See okay. That's the We require your nanny. The assistance of the Holy Spirit. Because when Moses lifted up his hand, it was the east wind that blew and created a tunnel for the children of Israel to pass through. And I'm believing God that tonight, even as we pray, the wind of the Holy Spirit will blow in Jesus' name. The fifth way you can deal with a man change is to dynamite it. Blast it out of the way. In Joshua chapter 6, in Joshua Orikefa, verse 20, Joshua chapter 6, Joshua verse 20, when the children of Israel came face to face with the wall of Jericho, the Lord asked them to shout. When they shouted, the wall didn't just fall. It was reduced to rubble. God sent a dynamite from heaven and blasted the whole world down. I believe there might be one or two people here tonight ready to shout to God so that their mountain can be blasted so out of the way. If you are one of the two, let me see your, your feet and let me hear you shout a big hallelujah. 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 I decree in the mighty name of Jesus that every wall of Jericho in your life will crumble tonight in Jesus' name. The sixth way you can deal with a mountain is to relocate it. According to Mark 11, verse 22 to 23, Mark 11, verse 22 to 23, Jesus Christ told the disciples, have faith in God. If you have faith in God, you can say to this man, Mountain, be thou removed. It was shady. Mountain, woke. Relocate. Pakoda. Change your position. Pakoda. Get out of my way. Kuolo jo na ye me. And he shall obey you. Yosi bossi ole. All you need to relocate a mountain is to 
is faith in God. And you're saying so. Tonight, when it is time for prayer, I'm going to give you an opportunity to command your mountains to move out of the way. And in the name that's above every other name, they will obey you in Jesus' name. But then there is a seventh way of dealing with a mountain. And that is to fly over it. The mountain is there. You don't want to turn back. You don't want to walk around it. You don't want to struggle climbing. You don't want to dig through it. You don't want to blast it. Because you want to use it as a reference point. That was the mountain that was trying to block my way. You don't even want to waste time relocating oh, it. But you want to fly so over it. That's the theme of our convention. We want to develop wings like eagles. We want to fly over every mountain. All it will take is to wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount with wings as eagles. Is anybody here tonight who is ready to fly over all Are you sure? Are you ready to wait so upon the Lord? Yesterday when I asked us to pray for one hour, some of you are not used to long prayer. I said, one hour? But you discover that one hour is not a long time. In fact, I, I can tell you I was seriously delighted. Because throughout the night, there were people here praying. Praying. All night long. I was delighted. You know, me too. How did you know there were people here praying? <laughs> because I was praying with them. I want to fly. Thank God I'm already flying. But I want to fly higher. How many of you want to fly tonight? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. But before you begin to even command mountains to move, there's a story in Acts chapter 19. From verse 13 to 17. Acts 19, verse 13 to 17. Some people saw the way God was using Paul. How he was moving mountains out of the life of people. So this is why a man who had a real mansion. They saw a man who was demon possessed. 
and they decided let's move the mountain out of him and so they went to the man and said hey you devils get out of this man <laughs> and the devil said who are you who gave you the right to command me to move? I know Jesus. If he commands me, I will obey. I know Paul. He has a relationship with Jesus. If he asks me to move, I will obey. Who are you? If you have no relationship with Jesus Christ, oh, Jesus Christ, if you have not surrendered your life to Him, so, if His blood has not washed away your sins, yes, and you begin to command mountains to move, so, mountains will laugh at you. Okay, I'm off your running. I say, who are you? By what authority are you commanding uh, me to move? That's one point you must note. Second point. Even if you have a relationship with God, you are born again. You are washed in the blood. You have been forgiven. God is your supporter. And then you command the mountain to move. And the mountain answers and says, okay, now that will we be. Ah, In whose name are you asking me to move? And you say, in the name of Jesus, of course. And the mountain says, okay, why we pray? <laughs> it is Jesus who asked me to stand here. Yes, we learn in what you are seeing video. Because of your disobedience. I go on, right? Ask Jonah. Be real, what Jonah? God sent him to go to the east. He refused his start, start running to the west. And God sent a storm to block his way. Everybody was praying. Everybody was rowing. And when they woke up, Jonah, why are you sleeping when we are in trouble? He said, oh, what's the problem? They said, there's a storm. Call, call your God so that the storm may stop. <laughs> he said, no, 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 no. I know why this storm is there. I'm the one responsible. You want the storm to end? You get rid of me. As soon as they threw him into the ocean, the storm ceased. You can't move a mountain that you are the one who caused it. Oh, let's see. Nidi, Nibba, Eko, or no, Losho, Kufa, Iwa, Oke, Inibe. Many a times God uses the mountain to say to you, You are going astray. Come back to me. And then we'll take care of the mountain. Many of us are backsliders. And it's as a result of the backsliding that we got into trouble. The word of God is clear. 
when you are doing his will no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper you're watching redemption way There is a redeemed Christian Church of God very close to you. Join them for a life-changing experience in worship. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Welcome you specially to the Open Heavens International Center. I tell you that I had several encounters with God in that house. Then somebody shout me. The anointing in that house is uh, awesome. on this same station at this time next week for another wonderful experience as Pastor E.A. Adeboye exposes the deep mysteries in the Word of God.